meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. Uh, my name is Councillor James Husband. Um, I'm actually the Chairman of the Planning Committee. Um, I'm standing in for my colleague, Councillor Bennett, who was due to chair this evening's meeting, but unfortunately, um, airlines have let him down, but he is probably across the Atlantic as we speak. Um, but uh, we, are, we are otherwise, I think, present. Are there any apologies for absence? Uh, uh, just yeah. Councillor Bennett, as you said. Yes, yeah. yeah, okay, that's, that's very good. Um, colleagues, any declarations of interest? Uh, I can't spend I'm not sure if it's relevant well to clear it anyway. I was a former governor of the council of school for 10 years. Uh, I ceased to be in uh, uh, 2020, uh, and I'm uh, no communication with regard to okay. the application. Okay. And uh, just to do it. Thank you, and I just note that agenda item S035 for Beach Gardens is in my board. Um, but just to detail that, I have no communication with the applicant or objection. Okay, thank you very much. I'll, I'll make a simple Sorry. declaration. There are uh, two applications, I think, in my ward uh -huh. in Chelsea for site. I have no engagement with them. All right. Is that, uh, um, that would be Old Church okay, Street and, and also Justice Walk when we get to those. Okay, very good. So if those are noted, um, if we can now move on, uh, please. Now we have minutes of the meeting that was held on the uh, 21st of March. Um, I think Hamish, you were actually present at this meeting. Yes. Can I sign the piece as a reference, colleagues? Is that great? Thank you. I think it might help if I indicate um, the order in which we'll um, be uh, dealing with the cases. And also, I should introduce um, across the table um, here are the officers who will be. Uh, presenting the cases and offering us advice. And this evening, um, the most senior officer present is Katie Hurrell, um, sitting on my far right. And uh, Katie this evening is standing in for the Director of Planning and Place. And along the table, um, as you will have noticed, the, it's the five of us who are councillors who will be making the decisions on the cases in front of us. Um, our order this evening, in a moment or two, we will start with the applications uh, in Bassett Road, then 12 Holland Park, then Justice Walk. We will then move on to the application Portobello Road, Queensdale Walk, and then Old Church Street, Phil Beach Gardens, Bassfield Primary School, and then finally the application relating to Coalfield Primary School as well. So if we can start by going to the, the North Pack and uh, Fiona Ray. Uh, Fiona, you're going to introduce this, I think, aren't you? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, just draw members' attention, first of all, to the edits in the addendum report you received. And then turning to the slides. Um, the application is for a single-storey um, extension over the footprint of the main house at 49A Bassett Road. Um, importantly, there is an identified gap between the two buildings. So you could just see through the site plan where there's a gap um, to the neighbouring property. That's what we talk about in the report. This is an image of number 49, and number 49A is this building to the right-hand side of the screen. This is a street scene image that shows you that 49A in context with number 49 and number 51 to the right. This image is of the rear elevation of the property and that gap we talk about. The new extension is proposed to rise above this part of the building here. This is a helpful photograph received from one of the objectors looking out of the neighbouring side window. So you see the context of the existing built form, and it's in this position the new extension would be. So turning to the plans, the existing and proposed basement and ground floor are the same. The raised ground level and the first floor. It's when you um, get to the roof level of the property that we see the additional floor, which is best shown on these elevations. So there's the existing elevation and the proposed with the additional level shown here. Again, existing side elevation, 
proposed side elevation, showing that additional floor. Officers are recommending approval for the application as outlined in the report. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, we've got uh, speakers um, for this. So if I can ask Councillor Dent Code and the other two um, objectors, please do join us at the table here. Between, between the three of you, you've actually got up to five minutes in total. I'm not quite sure how you want to use this. It's really up to you. Um, but uh, please go ahead when you're when you're ready. Um, I'll hope you speak for two minutes. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just to say, I can see um, the building from my rear window, uh, but it's my neighbours in the immediate area that I'm most concerned about. Um, I agree entirely with all the objections that I'm sure you have read, but I want to focus on an earlier application that for 95 Oxford Gardens, a corner building very like um, Portland Bassett Road, with a slightly larger footprint. In 1988, the council refused an application to build a two or three storey house on what had been the garden of uh, number 95 Oxford Gardens. The client appealed, but the planning inspector had dismissed the appeal and upheld the refusal, and this plan decision is a material consideration. This was the basis um, on which it was refused. The effect of the property on the character and appearance of the street, the effect on neighbouring buildings, and more importantly, the gap. And there was a gap from Cambridge Gardens through Oxford Gardens and all the way up to Bassett Road. And although the stables has been extended, it was built, it wasn't part of the original building, because the stables came later than the original building, and that has been built up. There is still a, a, there is still a gap there. Um, and uh, these gaps are important. It's part of the Gardens uh, uh, conservation area. Um, and the, as I say, it's part of the desirability of preserving and enhancing the character and appearance. Um, and uh, the, the, the 1988 application was refused because it would have impinged on the gap. So the application at that time for a two or three storey building at Oxford Gardens was considered so egregious at that time that it necessitated the construction of an almost entirely underground house that would be invisible from the street. It was even reduced slightly um, so that you couldn't see anything at all as you're passing by a brick wall. We have to be consistent with our conservation areas. Gaps are important and scans our character and appearance. And if, if, if in 1988 we, we divide that this house should be built underground to preserve the gap, then we would be making ourselves ridiculous to allow um, the, the filling in of this gap. Um, the, the light and vistas of neighbours is also hugely important, um, and they've suffered 10 years of building on the site. Um, I don't feel that the, um, the design of the new building is harmonious. I think it's an aberration. I think it every day and I'm unhappy with it. It does not preserve and enhance the conservation area, and it doesn't ensure a good living standard for the neighbours. Uh, please refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Chair. Geraldine and I are neighbours of 49A Bassett Road, and we speak for a group of local residents, some of whom are here. Thank you. One of the decisive issues in considering this plan is whether the proposal ensures good living conditions for occupants of new, existing and neighbouring buildings. As a resident of 51 Bessie Road, for me, the impact of this development on my living conditions would be significant. Firstly, enclosure. The current views from my kitchen window would be replaced by a brick wall in very close proximity. Secondly, the light reaching my home working station at my dining table would be badly affected by this proposal. This reduction was even flagged in the applicant's own daylight and sunlight study. In my recent objection, I shared some photographs to illustrate these two points well. I would like to invite committee members to visit my home to see for themselves the negative impact the proposals would have. Until this impact is understood, the only fair way forward 
would be to defer the decision. Thank you. In addition to Geraldine's comments on the negative impact on living conditions, we've got three more objections to this proposal. Firstly, the aesthetics of the development, they contravene policy CL3 heritage assets. The house in Bassett Road is one of the most coherent and best preserved um, parts of the whole conservation area. And 49A Bassett Road marks a, a key transition between the design and style of the buildings in Bassett Road and the characteristics of those in St. Mark's Road. So a big, blocky, flat roof building of the size proposed is quite out of character with the neighbourhood. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the area. Photos in the application paperwork show how out of keeping the proposal is. Um, and I think the scale and design will be very out of, out of character. The extension will not, as the policy requires, contribute positively to the townscape. Second thing, the proposal contravenes the requirement for planning gap, something Emma referred to. Um, this policy designed to focus attention on preserving the views, vistas, gaps, and the skyline that contribute to the character and quality of the area. Should an additional story be added to the coach house, it will impede those views, the outlook and the planning gap, which currently mark the transition, as I mentioned, between Bassett Road and St. Mark's Road. And the third thing, privacy and overlooking. And this is something felt by all of those of us on the other side of the house. So Oxford Gardens, St. Mark's and, and, and Bassett House. The original approval for this development, that's the whole building there, um, agreed that the rebuilt coach house could extend to the rear to the side, and it was accepted that the limit of the increase in the bulk had been reached with the addition of a basement. The proposal for an additional story, which was previously refused, goes against prior decisions in that it enables further bulking up of the building, and from the rear, 49A and 49 appear to be the same building, and the proposed development makes the combined building larger, more dominating. I have to stop you there. And on these grounds, I'd like it to be refused. Thank you very much. Um, just move up a little bit because if I can ask Mr. Smith, um, I think you, you're the A. Oh, would you like to? Yeah. Uh, please do join us uh, here. <clears throat> And in similar fashion, you've actually got up to five minutes if you need it. Okay, well, I've timed myself for three. Please go ahead. Please go. The applicants are the first occupants of this new house, which came with 52 prior applications. We understand the developer went bust twice during the construction, and we realise it must have been an extremely disruptive and stressful process for the neighbours. Given this background, we can understand any proposals for further building work will likely meet apprehension and strong resistance. However, the design for the new house was flawed in certain respects. The limited usable garden um, to the rear was half occupied by an oversized light well, which we've addressed under a separate application, and 80% of the floor area was below street level. So we've engaged the council on a pre-application, which took six months to explore the options. The site is a single planning unit. It's, on, it's been on its own title since 1896. It is flanked by four-storey and six-storey buildings. It has lost all characteristics of a coach house, and there are no direct evidence in the area. The gap identified on figure 2.2 .2 of the conservation area of appraisal is between the main building 49A and 51, including the side porch, but not the main house. The proposed extension is therefore outside of this gap. The gap is fully preserved. <coughs> the flats at 51 Bassett Road are orientated north-south with small east-facing windows over the side passage. They are over seven metres from the proposed extension. These windows face three tiered brickwork walls. So the proposed extension obscures an existing view largely of the brick wall above it, which is quite dark. The applicants would have been open to um, exploring this new side facing wall being in a bright stucco, but this was not the council's preference. The daylight and sunlight analysis is clear. All of the nearby windows remain well lit. Only one kitchen window is marginally over the 20% daylight distribution BRE guideline for a materially noticeable change, and it is still comfortably at similar parts. All windows pass the vertical sky component recommendation. Being on the north side of the back gardens of the extension, of, of the extension it does not block sunlight to the immediate spaces behind it. The assessment is considered a very comfortable pass in terms of daylight and sunlight for an urban area which the council has accepted. 
There are significant benefits to this application. It provides an NHS consultant doctor with an above ground office to work from home. It provides a young family with additional above ground bedroom space. And we've added a blue green room, which attenuates rain pool in a critical drainage area. We agree with the council's assessment that the proposal retains subservience and harmonizes well with the surroundings, whilst retaining a good standard of living for the surrounding properties. Three quick procedural points. Um, due to the prolongation of this application and the pre app, um, it has actually been recommended for approval by four planners, two different case officers separately, and two different team leaders. And whilst we're grateful for Councillor Dent Code's um, input in helping us get the pre app moved forward, um, I, I was trying to understand what her relationship was to the application, but I think that's been cleared up and will be recorded. Um, finally, um, at the request of, of the case officer, um, there has been an, uh, a, sort of a precondition included about methodology. The, the previous um, uh, project was unbelievably disruptive and, and prolonged, and this is not the same type of process. This is a roof extension by domestic homeowners with a pre-commencement condition about how they do it. So that, that completes mine. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, any questions for either party? Uh, Lloyd. Um, uh, Mr Smith, um, you will recognise that there is considerable opposition to this, and uh, including the St Helens Resident Association that have written in as well. Um, how do you justify that this application is uh, going to benefit your client, uh, however, to the detriment of quite a few of your neighbours, <laughs> which is I think the St. Helens um, Association is actually outside their specific jurisdiction, I thought. But are you asking about the consultation itself or about how, how can this be justified? I think the only sort of public benefit of it is the addition of the blue-green roof, which reduces surface water uh, flooding risk in the area. Um, I think optimising the borough's housing development is, you know, this is seen by the council as an opportunity where it can take densification and there aren't many. Um, so it provides a family, happens to be an NHS doctor, with better, appropriate, above ground living conditions. And I think that's a good thing if it can be done without detrimental impact on the neighbours, which the Sunlight and Daylight Report even announces that it can. Okay. Okay, in that case, if you return to your seats, please. Okay. Okay. Colleagues, um, do we have any questions to officers? Uh, yes, just about the conservation area. So, objectors um, have pointed out that it contravenes a requirement to provide a, a gap or a break in that it changes the form of the gap and break. Can you explain, I suppose, the, how, can you explain the, in detail how the conservation area would approach such a, a, a comment? So obviously, you know, there aren't necessarily specific rules about what a gap or a break could look like. But um, are you able to just speak to how this how, how you can justify this. Um, I think you said that it means the development will preserve the character of the conservation area. How will you do so? Yeah, I think that's a really good question because it's one of the key issues is the impact on the conservation area. We have a statutory duty as decision makers to make sure the conservation area is preserved or enhanced. And we have to help us when we are understanding that and making those decisions. Not only the policies in our plan, but our conservation area appraisal statement. Now, the st statement for this area in the Oxford Gardens conservation area says that the gap that should be preserved is between the porch and the side wall of number 59. So it's this gap that is really key. I think it's relevant still to consider the overall impact on that wider gap. But for us, we have retaining a full seven metres. We're going above the existing footprint of the house. We're retaining, you know, the above floor here and the roof above. 
It's got a degree of subordinance by virtue of its design. So the floor to ceiling heights are slightly lower. The design treatment is paired back. You don't have the same kind of detailing on the elevation because of the nature of that existing property. So all of those things come together for us that successfully preserve the conservation area and retain that gap sufficiently. That's the conclusion we've reached. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, this is, uh, I'm just hoping you can clear this up for me. It's an issue of precedent. Um, because I understand that there have been um, refusals on the grounds of a street of small houses, right? And um, the, the guidance there that was being adhered to would be, um, would be, harm, would be um, reducing, I'm quoting, sorry, uh, harmfully reduce the supply of small family houses in the vicinity. And that's been grounds for refusal before. And what's the, what's the difference here? So um, I'm not aware of an application on this particular site um, that's involved a, a loss of the home. But for this one, it's not going to be reducing any units. The floor space will be increased for this particular property. So I think there is, you know, the benefits are limited in terms of public benefit. But overall, retaining a family home, making it arguably more usable for the people there and so I think there's no sort of recent decision that we could refuse on the same grounds but for precedent in terms of if you're referring to like the gaps the local area and the development that's happened around it that's all of that forms the context of this conservation area sure okay so just thank you just clear this up for me because um um, I think I'm just thinking more in terms of like there, there are more and more larger family homes and fewer and fewer smaller family homes. So we actually end up with, you know, that's just one of those processes by which I think a lot of people just get priced out and, and you know, smaller families don't have the same, uh, you know, same amount of options. So um, what, what can you tell me about that? Um, I mean, viability, <coughs> affordability, that kind of thing is definitely a planning consideration when we're looking at the delivery of new homes. Mm -hmm. It's much more difficult with something like this where it's an extension to an existing house. Um, so there's no policy basis for us to say, you know, you can't extend your home because you're, you're making it too large. We wouldn't have any kind of, yeah, policy basis to, to justify that, in my opinion. Uh, Lloyd, um, a difficult question, this one. Relating to the previous application for this property, which dates back some years, PP16-01881, so uh, the original coach house design, so this design as it currently stands is way beyond what that originally was. Um, but within the context of the conservation area, you're saying that this one, your recommendation is that this one would be, exempt, even though it's way beyond what the original design for that property was. Um, we would say through you, Chairman, that the exist the, the previous design was kind of as built. We've got uh, two additional floors above ground level next to the house. Mm. One additional story, in our opinion, still retains that you know degree of subordinates to the main house. So we're very comfortable with the design and and the overall approach, and that it still reads as sort of secondary. But that's our conclusion in in the report. Thank you. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, so we need to make a decision. Um, I think, for my part, I'm inclined to, to feel that <clears throat> the property 49 Bassett Road next door, I mean, has a very long planning history. It's also a very substantial building. So I think, personally, I, I feel even, even if an additional floor is added onto 49A, it, it still remains rather a, a subservient building and it's, it's still it's it, it's of smaller scale and i think the fact that the the, the gap is retained because the the extra story really is, is, is simply going a bit higher on that building um i think probably on balance that is something that is is reasonable um but what what do others think what, what well, on, on that gap, I mean, I would feel you're, you are, in a sense, still filling part of it in, aren't you? Because it's true, it is going above bursting. 
it's not going to fit it horizontally. But still, when you look at it in 3D, you are still filling in a substantial part of the gap that presently exists on that spot and provides quite a strong visual separation between the two styles to a passage or an opposite um, and then obviously there is the question of bulkiness. It, yes, yeah, you're probably right, it probably would still be subservient, but substantially less so. Um, and I would still be concerned about loss of light as well, but I think that would be a second bit, so. But I think, I think the loss of light, I think, is, I think that the, the technical data mm. doesn't really support yeah. uh, a loss of light. For the future, so it just technically doesn't really work. What do other people do? Um, I, I concur with what I'm so Dorian. I, I have concerns over it because it becomes much more dominant, and if I were a neighbour, I would probably be one of the objectors. However, I think for planning terms, it's difficult to uh, go against what is proposed and recommended for granting. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel similarly to Council and Lord North, actually. I think in planning terms it's difficult to object to, but I, I think we need to take into account the fact that it is already different and out of character to the other um, houses on the street. <coughs> so in, in conservation area context, you are creating a bigger building based on something that is already um, already different and it will appear back here. It's now, of course. So did you want to add a comment? Yeah, just a caveat. I do, I, I, yeah, I, I do think that uh, that represents quite a different character. Um, it's, uh, I think, I think actually the photographs give a better sense of that actually um, than, than the diagrams. Because you can just sort of see it does make a big difference to your particular general quality of your environment where you can just see sky and then you can't. But um, and in terms of the character being one of small houses, I, I think that would damage it. But um, it's my, that's my, yeah, that's my good thinking. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so, so I suggest we take a vote and see where we go. So the recommendation in the report, this is obviously the first application clearly that we've been discussing. Um, so the recommendation is to grant uh, permission with the, uh, with the conditions set out in the report. Um, I see those in favour of the recommendation, please. Um, those against? Uh, are you abstaining? Uh, sorry, I can't see. We're, 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 we're sitting in, in a line here. Okay, so the, the recommendation is not adopted. Um, <clears throat> so we now need to think in terms of what um, a refusal, a reason, a resolution for refusal might be. Um, I don't know, colleagues, I, I, uh, I do you want yeah, to Yeah, I think it's, it's the yeah. impact on the conservation area. Okay, okay. That's right. Yeah, in terms right. of the bulkiness. Right. I think, we, I think we would be saying that although the gap in terms of the, the width between the buildings was not actually going to change, we were saying that the impact of the additional height would have an impact on the gap within the conservation area. And that would be contrary, um, Mrs. Ray, to, I think, CL4? Yeah, I would say CL1, 2, 3, and 11 would right. probably be the most relevant okay. in your assessment. All right, right, okay. So can I ask, perhaps, uh, Councillor Aduri, would you like to propose a, a resolution to refuse permission on that basis that's seconded. Um, okay, Councillor Lloyd seconds. Um, can I see those in favour of that resolution um, to refuse on that ground? Okay, so that is agreed. So that's that's reviewed. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can we now move on to the the next application um, for again? It's it's still forty nine a, but obviously something's rather different. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yes, think. thank you, Chairman. Um, so this application is for the retention of a retractable awning for the rear lower ground floor level of the property. So the site constraints are the same as noted in the report. And it's and it's in the elevation, it's actually quite difficult to see. It's this awning here. So I'll just go straight to the photographs that give you the best view. 
So when closed, that is a, a photograph of that awning above the rear doors. And when open, that's a picture of the awning when open. So officers are satisfied there's no impact on the conservation area or living conditions of neighbours um, and are recommending approval. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we have um, uh, speakers uh, relating to this, and I think um, uh, this is right. You, you, you were you joined us earlier, but do come back to the table, please. And uh, you can see. And in this instance, you, you've got to up to three minutes when you're ready. Okay. Let's go. Sean, thank you. Um, I'm a neighbour, as you know, of 49 near Passet Road and um, objecting for many of the local residents here. In our view, this proposal should be rejected on three counts. Firstly, visual impact, amenity, and conservation area. And the context really important here, the rear ground of Bassett Road, Oxford Gardens, and St. Mark's, um, with their gardens, their trees, um, and, and bushes and wildlife, etc. they form an important amenity, which is enjoyed by all the residents of the houses in those three roads. Um, not just those who have access to the gardens, it's like an oasis of green um, or a garden square which is remarkably quiet and peaceful and the houses act as a sort of baffle to the noise from the outside world. So there's a pattern to the space which is provided <coughs> by the background colour and the patterns on the bricks of the houses, infilled by the organic growth and the various greens of the bushes and the trees and the lawns. And the principle and practice of those gardens is of a shared amenity. And the proposed uh, awning is part of a continuing process at 49A Bassett Road to expand the envelope approved in the original and much debated planning application for the whole site. And we object to the proposal to introduce a large and permanent canvas awning into the area. Firstly, visual impact. The assessments of the visual impact considered in the design and access statement relate only to the most adjacent property, which is 51 but ignore the impact on all the other households whose views out onto the garden square are negatively impacted by the addition of a really large horizontal canvas awning covering much of the garden, and it really stands out against the rear gardens of all the neighbours. The one thing it absolutely isn't is discreet, although it's claimed to be so in the design and access statement. It extends, as you see here, the whole width of the rear wall, but it extends out more than halfway to the boundary of the property. In fact, it's so large it had to be built in two awnings side by side, two sections. On the amenity, the design and access statement claims that the awning is not in use most of the time. However, the awning has been extended and in use permanently since it was first installed in November. I've only seen it closed once, which is to allow other building work being carried out in the garden. Um, it's been open all through the winter, which you might have imagined would be the time when it was least likely to be used. The awning does not, as stated, have a positive effect on the immunity of the surrounding neighbours. To the contrary, it's completely out of place in the line of brick buildings that form this enclosed area. The current state of the awning will only deteriorate as it stains from exposure to the elements, and its presence will become even more disfiguring. Um, on conservation area, Contrary to the policy CL6, the proposed awning harms the character and significance of the existing building, its setting and townscape, and it doesn't preserve the appearance of architectural integrity of the area. We believe the application should be refused. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Smith, if you sure. come back to the table, please. I wasn't actually listed to speak on this application previously. I, I didn't see the... Uh, the updated um, schedule until yesterday, but I've got some more. Yeah, I mean, you, you are listed, so you're in fact to just being here. Um, so please, whenever you're uh, ready. Please. Yeah, so I just have a few points to make about this morning. Um, first of all, is that it was installed unknowingly by the clients. The first I heard of it was that there was an enforcement action um, due to complaints about it. Um, so they didn't realise that it would have needed planning permission. Um, it's, it's on a lower ground floor, it's a south facing. Um, set of six windows, so it's partly there to provide shade internally as well as externally. The design of the original house is such that you get a lot of solar gain and a lot of glare in the living room. Uh, but principally, um, as well, there's um, 
there's a lot of really windows and, and high level windows looking into this particular garden. I mean, lots of the gardens around there, but particularly this one um, borders onto a lot of rear gardens. Um, so it provides a degree of privacy for their young daughters to, to be underneath it and outside. Um, uh, I think that's you know one of their principal reasons. There are health reasons as well, but I don't think they're well, you know, I, I don't think um, I should be raising them here. Um, you know, the, the, the other option to them is they, I think in planning terms, I think they might be able to tell us, they could put a pergola up, they could put large umbrellas up. Those will be allowed under planning law. It's just that this is screwed into the building that makes it require planning. Um, thank you. Um, any questions about this? Yeah, I think, um, yes, okay. Um, no, no questions at all. I'll just, just to ask, um, you claim that your clients, Mr. Stokes, you claim that the clients uh, didn't know that they had a plan commission, didn't know that they required it. So this application is in response to an enforcement action. So, right, so when you, when they built, when these windows were built, there was no thought to... No, so the, 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 house, wasn't, the house, house wasn't built by them. They're, they're the first occupants of the house, but they didn't build the house. They weren't the yeah. developer of the house. Okay. Uh, but, but you're right. Look, it, you know, I wasn't the architect of the house. There wasn't much thought given to that. Okay. Clearly. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, questions to officers. I guess. <clears throat> I guess the first question actually is that because this awning is screwed into the building, it's deemed to constitute development. And therefore requires planning permission. Is that whereas, whereas enormous umbrellas put up in exactly the same space by planning commission? Yeah, is, that's is that correct? correct. Is that... Yeah. Um, any questions, colleagues? Um, okay. Um, right. So we need to make a decision about this. Um, what, do you, what can we think about this? I mean, given that it's retractable, in a way I would almost think of it if we consider it at its largest extent, you know, the way it's normally rolled out. I mean, if you effectively take that as being what we are asked to be considering, then I would question you know, the impact that it has on the conservation area. Because if that were a roof, for example, that would have been asked to approve. Any other? I just actually the, the picture that I can't see up there is the one that I see in the objections, which is not from the property itself, it's from the neighbours. Um, uh, if I can just find it. It's the one scene for, oh uh, yeah, here it's we go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the fact that it like, stands out against the green even more, the fact that it takes over 50% of the actual garden space at the rear, um, and I, I, I can't think that anybody putting that in there would not at least ask the question in the conservation area that they would need to get planned permission. Um, so I can see that I'm sympathetic to the objection to this, that this is um, a very large structure, stands out like a sore thumb, and uh, no attempt for planning permission was obtained, and it had to be enforcement to bring it to the estate. Yes, but I, I, mind you, though, um, we, we, we have to be very careful not to get into you know, arguments about saying retrospective planning permission sure. isn't okay. acceptable yeah. and you know, that kind of thing. I understand. Um, I agree, when it's, it's fully extended, the awning is, is, is quite substantial. Um, but then, you know, the separation of these buildings is, is also, you know, there's quite a lot of distance there. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think actually, Councillor Adurian's point, if this was a, a permanent roof structure, then I think it would be different. But I think the fact it's an awning, um, I, I, I think probably does change, change the balance somewhat. Um, so, uh, I think we need, need to make a, a decision so the recommendation is that um, this is granted with the, the conditions attached. Um, can I see those in favour, please? Those against? Um, okay, so that's granted by three votes to one. 
um, with one abstention. Thank you very much. Um, if we can stay in the North Pack, I will now move to the application of 12 Holland Park. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just draw members' attention again to the addendum report. Importantly, we have received an additional objection since the report was published that, is, that has gone into that. Um, I thought it would be helpful just to um, outline our comments with regard to the procedural question about the design and access statement. I just wanted to confirm that officers are satisfied with the level of information received in terms of supporting the application, um, and this has helped to inform the design um, and our decision, and we think the level of information is proportionate. So planning, oh, sorry, list of building consent only is sourced on this application. Um, and list of building consent is sought for nine holes for investigative purposes. So I understand from the conservation officer who dealt with this application that this property has been heavily altered in the past um, and they want to do some opening up work to understand what has happened and the structural integrity of that building. So the intention is to dig nine holes. Once the concrete is removed, they will then hand dig within those holes to know bigger space than one metre by one metre. And those works proposed will be overseen by a structural engineer. Um, once they've been uncovered with hand digging, um, the information will be recorded. Those holes will then be backfilled and the concrete reinstated over the holes. So importantly, no historic fabric is proposed to be removed um, and officers are recommending a condition to that effect, condition five. Um, so the, the plan in front of you and is included in your pack identifies those holes for you, the nine of them. And just to, to help you uh, in your assessment, again, you've received these photographs showing you, you know, whereabouts the holes are going to go. Um, our conservation officer has reviewed this in detail and officers are satisfied that the significance of the building would be preserved and we have no objection and then therefore recommending we grant this to building consent. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so we have some uh, speakers for this. So if I can ask um, the objector to come forward first, but please uh, do join us at the table. I think you, you represent the owners of the ne neighbouring property. Um, so. uh, several uh, residents in the area. Um, there's quite a um, few we represent in the past with uh, okay. their previous basement objections made. Um, so, okay. I understand. Great. So uh, please, um, when, you're, uh, when you're ready, you've got uh, it's up to three minutes. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, my name is Jeff McGarvey, and I'm representing several local residents who have significant concerns for the application of this property. The applicant has applied for nine trial courts for investigative purposes as discussed, but they've not specifically said what they are investigating for. Um, <clears throat> our concern is in order to facilitate yet again another mega basement application in the future. Um, one thing to point out is that on the 30th of January, four vans from the construction company MGBC were seen removing debris and waste from the property. And MGBC is a specialist uh, basement construction piling um, company. Um, in working in the area. Uh, we raised that obviously it's a legal and uh, criminal act to remove historic fabric without uh, prior consent and um, one of our clients raised this with the enforcement team. Now when this was uh, allegation was addressed the, the applicant stated that they were building new furniture and this is just uh, surprising considering the video and um, uh, photographic evidence we have of numerous trucks up, up to four as we said removing significant amounts of debris um, from the property and these were these works resulted in a level of vibration felt in a number of neighboring properties and could, uh, works were carried out outside of permitted construction hours on a weekend um, we do not believe that they were simply building desks and wardrobes as suggested to the head of planning enforcement when it comes to the application itself we're concerned as I said that the minimum validation requirements have not been complied with Regardless of the scale of development, national requirements need a heritage assessment, which sets out the existing historic significance, 
and the, the effects that this would have on it. This has not been supplied as part of a listability concern and is a, it's a national requirement for all listability concerns. The proposals also include works that uh, for uh, at the very back would that affect the root protection area of a tree. Um, that tree, there has been no horticultural method statement, there's been no um, confirmation that uh, there is going to be tree protection works carried out here, and there is obviously no concrete at that part in the root protection area. It could affect significant uh, roots that overlook Holland Park as well. Um, it's also, uh, so we believe that that should be refused not only in that reason, but if the committee is minded to approve it, that the core cultural method statement should be conditioned as part of the proposals to protect that tree. And then in terms of, we're concerned because of the previous construction works or supposed construction works that seem to have been carried out already, that this is closely monitored from a heritage perspective, not solely a structural perspective. Uh, the structural team say they're going to use a drill and that they're going to be drilling one meter below the concrete slab and this could result in unintentional damage to historic fabric as you saw from the photos um, attached to this. There's already been quite a lot of preparation work carried out to the property whether or not that's been consented or requires consent is not for the here and here and now. But we also wish that there's a condition for heritage monitoring to repair and a repair statement methodology should uh, damage be done to historic fabric. Uh, we're also concerned that we need to be a volumetric limit on the amount of uh, excavation material from the trial pits. Um, the trial pits are meant to be one cubic meter rather than one meter wide and one meter in depth. So we want a volumetric condition attached to the planning permission as well, should you decide to grant it, limit each trial pit. Um, we have said like that we're concerned about how construction and potential construction has been carried out already. They, there's concerns that there's been a bit of misinformation to the planning enforcement team already. Thank you for uh, the time as well on this um, Thank you. Um, uh, so I think we also have um, um, Alex Grenner. Are you present? <laughs> I think you're the addition for the app. Yes. The search items when you're ready, and in sort of fashion, it's actually actually a little bit over three minutes. So please, that's right. um, so please, um, when you're ready. Alex, otherwise everyone. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Alex Graham, planning consultant for the owner of the house. Um, this background, the application, as uh, the officer has explained, is for investigative work only. Uh, so that it may inform the final refurbishment and design of this house for a resident of this borough. All of the trial holes within the house relate to modern concrete floors with no historic features. For reasons of best practice, it's important to understand what, if anything, uh, sits below those concrete floors, and that is achieved by this application. We've noticed a number of objections have been submitted and ultimately there's no substance of value in objections received. This application constitutes a very clear and proportionate amount of information on which to base an assessment on. Uh, your offices also agree, having firstly validated the application, showing that sufficient information has been provided and confirmed today by your officer. And secondly, the assessed, uh, and secondly assess the application based on that. Uh, in order to reach a very clear recommendation to approve. The documents show clear locations, maximum sizes for the trial holes, justification and assessment alongside a full method statement. The method statement confirms that modern concrete would be removed and then holes would be hand dug to expose any features or footings before being refilled. Nothing found would be damaged or removed. Planning and Heritage Assessment Letter then draws on this information and assesses it, concludes that the trial pits will have no impact at all on the special character of this building, um, as the proposed holes do not remove any historic fabric. This is also the view of your officer, who has correctly and firmly reached the conclusion to approve. So we don't feel there's any question the application provides sufficient and clear information on that first point. Um, it's also strange that we've got objections stating how important it is to find, uh, to protect historic fabric, and yet we have people seeking to resist quite a simple and standard application for investigating where any historic fabric might actually exist. 
Uh, we've committed a structural engineer to oversee all the work. This is conditioned and we welcome this. No drainage will be affected. Uh, no trees will be affected, and that's actually confirmed by our own arboriculturist who's been to site a couple of times. Importantly, no historic fabric will be harmed or removed as a result of this application and the documents uh, submitted with it to confirm that. Um, your conservation officer uh, also confirms that, and unlike the objectives, it's had the benefit of a number of site visits. Um, in conclusion, there's simply really no legitimate reason uh, to refuse this application. I would implore members to see the facts uh, rather than the repetitious complaints that simply look to frustrate any legitimate attempt to deal with this heritage asset in the correct way. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Um, so questions. Um, I'm going to ask the uh, uh, objective first. Um, you mentioned a tree. Can, can you point out on one of the plans where, where this tree is? If you see oh. the right hand plan there, um, so you'll see right at the edge of the boundary where is that red dot. So there, that's where the trial tape is proposed. And you can see just the kind of southwest of that, there's a, a black mark showing the, the set the trunk of one tree uh, there already. Um, so we have even first and foremost, I, I haven't constructed any of our cultural, so I don't know what the suggestion that we I have one means. Uh, but it is clearly from other of our cultures who've objected to this, um, <coughs> clearly within the protection area, it's been considered as such. And it's just a case of making sure that a tree which is protected because by virtue of the conservation area, it also overlooks Holland Park and has the character of that, um, that that's protected through the, this development. And I think that it's not, if it's not an unreasonable request to try and protect a tree and, in, and suggest that um, confirmation through an arboricultural cultural method statement is, is done, we're going to be excavating by the looks of things within the, well, we are actually, that is being excavated within the roof protection area and um, suggestions through the structural um, engineers note that they're going to use drills right down there um, as with all the other, um, um, as with all the other trial pits. Um, it is somewhat concerning, um, so a specific method statement is not an unreasonable thing to request. Okay, uh, just a quick question to the, uh, the agent. Um, you, you say that um, these investigations are through um, a sort of concrete. So the building at, at some point, um, the building, in fact, at the lower level, a concrete floor was created across a huge area of the site. Is, yeah. is that correct? And it's a, it's, it's a case of what, it, what actually lies below that. Some of which might might actually be original fabric. It's possible it's original fabric. Yeah, but absolutely. Is, is, is that how you see what's happened to this building over the years? Yes, I mean it's been altered for I think the last ten to fifteen years, certainly before our client bought it, and it's become evident as we've done more investigation into the building. Um, what's clear, and I think you can see it dotted on the middle of the top of the floor plan there, is uh, a swimming pool was was created and, and a series of concrete structures to support that and the floor raised in concrete around it uh, and then subsequently infilled uh, and concreted over again um, and the vaults where we've got two little red dots for investigation also has a full concrete screened floor and seems to have steel reinforced beams within it um, and likewise as you get to the edge of where that staircase is in the middle of the floor plan and then beyond it. Uh, that is all new reinforced concrete walls, ceilings, uh, the rear wall of the, the house at lower ground floor has been taken out previously and the lower ground floor has been extended. So the purpose of these trial bits is to understand what sits beneath all that modern intervention. Unfortunately, because it was done 10, 15 years ago, planning drawings don't give us everything we need. Uh, and it's best practice to just reveal that and understand the structural integrity of the modern concrete walls and also whether there are any original footings beneath it. We, we doubt it because some of these gutted it to put a swimming pool in, 
uh, but we want to know so that we can properly inform the design. Okay, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. That makes sense. Can I just on the point of the, the tree as well? Just quickly, our, yes. Our okay. culture yeah. officer has uh, looked at that, and then point ten in your officer's report it says they've been down to site. They've, they've actually requested a series of trial holes to look at where roots are, uh, and they have no objection to the trial hole in that location. I think it's beneath the category U tree as well. Uh, we certainly won't be drilling into it as well. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Well, just a quickie. Um, <coughs> uh, you, do you say you will or won't be using drills to do this excavation? So there's, uh, I'm not going to profess to be an expert on particular drilling techniques, but there are, uh, there's a core drill that they can use to take out small sections of the concrete and then break it out, remove it until they hit soil, and then they will hand dig that with tools. Um, I don't think they'll be doing that on using small core, core drills for, for soil, that's probably an air spade or something similar that would be useful for others. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. 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 With regard to the trees, we put that information in, in the report pack for your, just for your information. This is just listed building consent. So you wouldn't be able to refuse listed building consent on any impact from trees. So that's important for you to know in your consideration. It's just the significance of the listed building you're looking yes. at. Um, the one other point I would like to make, which I should have done in my presentation, so I apologise, is that if we were, if this application were to be refused and it went to the inspector at an appeal, it's unlikely condition six, which the applicant has agreed to, um, making sure there is a structural engineer overseeing those works, would be added by an inspector. Um, it kind of goes above and beyond perhaps what a list of building consent does, but they've agreed to it in the interest of the, the structural stability of that building and they recognise the importance of it. So I just wanted to mention that. So thank you. Okay. Um, any points like to make? Well, I think, um, yeah, I think <laughs> it's, it's what's proposed here is, is really what seems, I suggest, seems a perfectly reasonable attempt to understand what has actually happened to a property previously under previous ownership and uh, you know I think that seems to me a reasonable enough thing to be uh, for somebody the owner of a building to be doing. Um, I think the point actually just made about um, conditions uh, you know, clearly um, you know somebody who was an inspector might uh, might feel that uh, some of these conditions weren't necessary at all, actually. But um, anyway, any, any comments, guys? Anyone? Okay. Well, in that case, now this is just a listed building application. So the recommendation is that we um, grant listed building consent. Um, can I see those in favour, please? That is agreed. Thank you very much. Um, so we can now, for the first time, go to the south, and uh, I, I think, um, Michael, you're, uh, I mean, you're going to introduce um, Justice Walk, aren't you? Ah, uh, Fiona, Fiona Ray is actually going to do this. Yes. Okay. Sorry. My, my fault. No, thank you, Chairman. It was a last minute change on our part, so thank okay. you for that. <laughs> Um, so firstly, I'd like to draw members' attention again to the addendum report. Um, again, importantly, we've got an additional objection for the scheme received, and a copy of that is in full in there. Um, there's also some other tweaks to the report itself, and we're suggesting we add two conditions relating to the air conditioning unit um, relating to noise and vibration. So turning to the slides, the application site is within the Cheney Conservation Area. And I think this slide is really helpful because it just shows you the context um, of these properties. So 
This is Justice Walk, the application site number five, outlined in red. Um, this blue line indicates uh, 10 Lawrence Street, 11 Lawrence Street here, and nine Justice Walk next door here. So planning permission um, is as per the development description in the report, but just um, pointing things out for you here, we've got two roof lights proposed on the main roof, which are indicated by these two arrows. We have changes to the existing rear elevation. So that's it as a photograph. This is it in elevation. And here you can see those ele elevation changes there. At second floor level, they've got two existing balconies. One is proposed to be increased in size, and it's this one here, which I will show you in plan. So you can just about see that, well, the red line indicates the existing, and this faint gray line, I'm ap apologies for the quality, but in your report pack, it should hopefully be clearer. It's extending to this position here. In the report, we talk about a privacy, privacy screen being erected on that balcony. So at the moment, it doesn't have one. And the privacy screen will go along in this location here. Just to put that into context for you, I've repeated this photograph. So that's the existing balcony. The proposed will come up to this parapet edge. This one here will be where the privacy screen goes. And then that's the other existing balcony at the property. This is a really helpful photograph uh, received by the objectors showing you that, that balcony kind of in that close-knit context. That's it existing. This is where it would come out to. And the red line, the red arrow, sorry, indicates where that privacy screen would go. These are just some images showing you other terraces and, and alterations that exist around there. So in terms of the considerations for the conservation area. And this is the location at ground floor level of the proposed air conditioning units. That's just an aerial image of the site in context. So officers are recommending approval subject to the conditions in the report and the addendum and that concludes my presentation thank you chairman um, thank you very much now we have further speakers registered um this is senator hearn yeah um, oh please, please so do join us at the table and uh please and uh, you are the property, uh, which is obviously very very near that yeah very well this is the this is the thing i mean by the way, some of the, the aerial photographs are old. It shows a tree which isn't there anymore. The problem really is hugger mugger. You know, we live on top of each other. And neighbour noise is really the big issue. So when we are, um, basically, we can even hear what goes on inside number five justice walk. I've had to go around on numerous occasions when the last tenants were there, or the tenants before the ones, children screaming and stuff. And I went round and anyway. Um, so it's it, neighbour noise is a problem with that property. It's just you're just very very close to us. Now the air conditioning is great. We don't object to that at all. Um, the balcony um, one tends to <laughs> get very very worried when people um, uh, seemingly want to increase the space. Which well we're not worried about parties because there's a, a nighttime party which is mentioned in the planning report. If there's a party in the middle of the night, you just call environment, environmental services. The problem really is somebody sitting up there yakking into a telephone. Now the, the back of our number 10 is not bedrooms, you know, it's my daughter's uh, sitting room. Um, she's coming back from university in the summer, that's where she will be sitting um, and she'll be trying to work and apply for jobs and all the rest of it. So it's, it's it, you know, it's not good for our living conditions. Upstairs um, the tenant works from home in the back of the flat too. Um, whenever there is any commotion outside, we have to flee to the front of the house. Um, so it's it's not a great situation. So there is the issue with neighbour noise, which um, there's World Health Organization guidelines and there's national planning guidelines, which the council should take into account to 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 reduce the potential for no neighbour noise because it causes so much friction and unhappiness between neighbours. And this is sort of classic. You know, they've got an outside terrace downstairs. Um, you know, why do they need a, a, a 
balcony up there. And another example of where we live on top of each other was a previous guy, somebody called Duncan, very delightful guy. He had this habit every morning to step outside and uh, do this. And I mean, really, you look at somebody, a man who's who's doing his his outside evolutions up there. And this is how people behave. And I think that needs to be taken into account. So ideally, from our point of view, just say no. It's no big deal. They've got downstairs, they've got another terrace, which they probably don't want to use because then they sit on top of Sally and Christopher. Um, but it's really just simply unnecessary. And it's very close. You can see those pictures. Yeah, I mean, our terrace there is not actually supposed to use, be used as a terrace. We always tell the tenants they can't use it. The tenants they can't use it. But I mean, sometimes they still put, put a table there, but they don't actually, nobody uses it. It's not being used as a terrace. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, remain there, um, and uh, uh, now I think there's an agent for the applicant. So would you like to join us as well? And uh, in similar fashion, you have two, three minutes as well, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Marco Bragioli from Prestige Architect. We welcome that the proposal have been recommended for approval by the case officer. The proposal primarily relates to internal upgrade and fenestration improvement to the rail of the property to address the existing terminal deficiency of the building, as the existing rear window provide poor levels of insulation. The property is in need of upgrade to improve the sustainability criteria and standard of residential operation. In design and heritage term, the proposal has been conceived in the context of immediate surrounding and are considered to provide a valuable enhancement of the real property. With regard to amenity, the proposal does not increase or looking comparatively to the existing scenario. We acknowledge neighbors have raised objection as this being point of concern. However, we wish to reiterate that the physical built form of the balcony already exists and is not a new addition. Also, there are already French doors accessing the area with railing, and the new proposed screen on both sides will actually improve on the current position. We have taken on board the public comments and our clients keen to ensure the neighbor concerns address addressed with the proposal. Hence, we welcome the additional addition to the application to a screen on both sides of the park, which we trust will address the concern. Furthermore, we would like to reiterate that this area is accessible only from the upper floor bedroom. The balcony is just 90 centimetres in depth, enough for one or two people. The nature of the size of the area alone dictates that the level of use is unlikely to be such that could cause substantial disturbance over and above the existing condition. The pictures loaded just yesterday on auto are actually a good example that if additional screening will be installed, it will be beneficial for screening view from both parties, from both properties. Additionally, the level of dis disturbance from the property will not be any difference to disturbance that might result from the occupier simply opening the French doors. There is a level of, of overlooking that exists in the immediate context already by virtue of windows and existing French door, let alone the surrounding building that already have large terraces and balconies serving the living space. In any event, the proposal offers a screen to the east area, which does not currently exist, and the client work an additional screen on the opposite side to address the neighbor concern, which we hope is considered a benefit for the proposal. I will recommend the committee's report the proposal as providing a valuable improvement of existing housing stock within the Royal Board. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So, colleagues, um, our opportunity to ask questions. Um, I have a question uh, for the agent. So um, you've obviously taken steps uh, to mitigate the visual um, overlooking, so the visual um, aspects of privacy, but um, obviously the objector has raised uh, noise levels. So what sort of reassurances can you give that this won't negatively impact the surrounding areas? Well, we are going to change all the windows in terms of insulations, so uh, and making sure that building is insulated properly, and I'm sure that will help in terms of noise uh, distribution. 
we have uh, proposed to put the acoustic enclosure for the air conditioning, which at the moment it does not exist, which I think is welcome by the neighbor uh, in terms of noise reduction. And of course, if you have air conditioning working in the summer, you don't open the window. So in terms of noise distribution, um, that, that I think it and would be... And in terms of the use of the... Of the um, so, yeah, it's off the bedroom. It's off the bedroom. So mm -hmm. um, it now would be a coffee or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, I, I, I'd just like to ask uh, um, this is Jeff. Um, would, you, would you agree that having having this uh, proposed screen, in fact, if we decided to add that as a condition, that, that that would have a benefit to you? It would prevent the, to a limited extent, a degree of overlook. Is that something that you'd recognize? Oh, yeah, no, obviously that would help with the overlooking. But I mean, the, as I said, it's the main problem is the noise and the overlooking. Of course, the yeah, and they still they still would be able to, in terms of privacy, they would still be able to look into the bedroom, it's the top flat. So for us, it wouldn't be so much of a problem. We're on the first floor, but the top floor would still have a problem. This one, because that where you would start with the the, the um, position from where this photograph is taken is basically a bedroom a patio door, um, and. Um, so it is an issue. I mean, it's 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 much closer than it looks there. I mean, the, the distance really is from here to maybe you, maybe a bit further. I mean, it's very, it is very very close. And I know a fag and a fag and a bun in the morning doesn't seem much, but you know then you know some people grab it on like it's just you can't believe it. It's, it's <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. people just do, and it's yeah, like no, you know, Sally and Chris <laughs> next to you. You know, no, they do it. I think, I think we all. We all understand that yeah. some neighbours are incredibly quiet people, um, but occasionally, if you're unlucky, you can have people make well, yeah, a lot right. of noise. Well, we'll give them extra you know, opportunity. I think, I think we, I mean... you know, we, 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 we just have to, we have to accept that. Any other questions? Lloyd? Well, so just add, add, you had add a very compelling case, I want to add, and I will probably be the same way. The only question I've got is, um, you can't quite see it from this picture, but what's to stop the other happening if you wanted to bun a cigarette on your balcony? Would the people opposite not have anything to do with Well, we t we, t we tend not to do that. We're, we're very acutely aware. <laughs> my daughter, I tell you, my daughter in the summer, yes. she goes around closing all the windows. We're not allowed to have windows open because everybody can hear what we say. So it's it's that sort of situation. The sound just bounces around, and it's like it's not great. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you both return to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, questions to officers. I, I just want to be quite clear about a couple of things. Um, first of all, the, if I've understood this right, the, a terrace exists at the moment with doors onto it. Yes? Yes, that's correct. So, so, that, so, so the idea of trying to take away something which exists is, 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 we can't do that. We, we can't possibly do that. No, that, that use of that flat roof as yeah. found is established. Yes, okay. So the argument, the argument is, can those railings which is proposed come forward a little bit? And the, the argument, if I, again, I've understood this, the mitigation is that there would be a screen uh, put up which would have a degree of screening of, 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 of some, of the, some of the views. I take the point that clearly these buildings sit in close proximity to one another, so there, there are always going to be uh, quite close views of other people's properties. But it's, it, that's, that's essentially the, the key, the, yes, the, the key part absolutely. of this proposed. And I'm just sort of possibly anticipating a conversation with colleagues. Um, if we decided that actually we weren't interested in the screen, but we wanted the railings to be to stay where they were. Right? Um, but maybe conditioned about. I'm sure there are conditions about 
than being remain painted black and things like that. Could we do that, or would that be something that we we couldn't really do? In terms, I'm thinking of the way that uh, conditions and also the actual description of the development, the way that that is made. Um, we could possibly edit condition three to say not with finding story number X, which would be the one that shows the balcony chain. Right. Hold on, let me just check the development description really quick. Um, okay, yeah, because the development description says new railings to rear balcony, okay, I think we could probably do, notwithstanding the whatever plan, the prior to the relevant part of the works, full particulars can be and then we could say the lo see the location of the railings to be in the same position. But I would question whether that's reasonable or necessary, um, given the existing situation and the benefits yes. of providing that privacy terrace. But that's for members to, yes. to consider. Yes. OK. Um, Colin, any questions that you would like to ask officers? No question. Are you going to answer the commentary? I would agree with that. That's not feasible. Right. Okay, um, so my question is about the balcony. But there are a number of other proposals, and this looks like quite a substantial change to me. Is it in keeping? What's your assessment of how, how yep. that looks with, is is aligned with the conservation area? Yep. Uh, through you, Chairman. Uh, the the so changes yeah, the to the merge of the two doors and the raised sliding door and enlarging the two windows. That's probably what officers have actually focused their yes. attention on in the report because it's the most drastic change. We've secured further details, um, including the design and materials of all this fenestration. Um, we are comfortable that the, the principle is fine. You know, the opening, openings are comparable in size. I'm gonna try and get it up on the same drawing so you can see, just about. Um, so the existing openings in terms of their width and proportion are similar. So we're, we were satisfied that that was acceptable and that, that applies again at roof level. And those are the two levels that are the most visible within its context. So it's, it's definitely a stark change, but the windows are not necessarily historic. There is a kind of a sort of eclectic mix of different properties, styles, window treatments around there. Um, so we're, we're satisfied there'll be a solution. This looks quite modern, the proposal. Yeah, how, how, I is agree. That, how visible is that? It's, it's most visible through you, Chairman, again, um, sort of from these private views and views down here. But I don't think there's any direct view onto it because of the way the site is arranged. But you'll get lots of, lots of public, sorry, lots of private views. It's probably best to I show you here. The view of the Lover Lawrence which has some sort of similar modern windows. Yeah, there, there is such a, it's actually very attractive around there because there's so much difference and change within that setting. So we thought the most important thing is the size of those openings and the treatment can be secured by condition. Thank you. Yeah, just, um, I'm just not sure how much of this issue of noise we, we should even really you know really even be considering given the, the the way it already is used and and just sort of speaking as you know i grew up in a very dense densely populated area on a busy highway i now live you know in a council property which is probably smaller than the um you know the projector's daughter's sitting room so um uh, how much of this kind of thing would actually we be even sort of allowed to base an, uh, a refusal on? I think the concern raised by the objector about, you know, the use of the terrace, that's established. So someone can go out right now onto that area and, and make a telephone call in a similar way. But, you know, you have to decide whether that would be so substantial, the change, that it would come, you know, cause material harm. We have concluded it wouldn't, being set off the bedroom. Um, but that's for members this evening to, to consider. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. No, I, actually, I very much agree with uh, uh, that, that question. In fact, I think, you know, I think we've got to be very careful not to stray into things which really are just not our business in planning terms. 
Um, so we need to make a decision. I, th I think, to my mind, looking at all of this and looking at the circumstances and the fact that a, a terrorist already exists, I think we, we would really be struggling to find a reason to actually refuse this. Um, I feel the decision, I would suggest that what we need to think about is we could, we could feel that the, um, the railings, the terrorists can come forward in the way that's proposed, add the condition with the privacy screen down the side, or we could say, as, as uh, Mrs. Ray has, has suggested, we could amend, it would be condition three, so the, the railings could be replaced, but their position would have to remain where they are at the moment. Okay. I think we've, we've because it, it comes down to the, the uh, as has been explained, the exact description of the development, uh, because we, we can't fundamentally alter the development, but we can alter its, we can alter conditions. Uh, we, can, we can do that. So that's really what I, I would suggest that we would um, need to think about what, what do people feel, which direction might people want to go? Not mentioned earlier. Hey, Ms. sure. Okay. So I'm inclined to say we, we should, um, so it's agreed, but the condition is altered, so the, the railings have to remain in the position they are in at the moment. Okay. No screening. Uh, um, yeah, because on that basis, you don't have any screening. Um, other other opinions? Who, who else would like to? Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the concerns raised um, by the objector, especially because justice law is so narrow and Kevin is not very supportive. But like you said, I think it's difficult to find a material reason to object, and I'm supportive of maintaining the condition of the ratings. Right. Okay. So it's not expanded. Yeah, okay, I'm Chairman, if I may just jump um, in. Katie, know, Katie I'm Carroll. I'm just thinking the discussion then needs to be had about, if that's the direction because we want to go in terms of amending that condition, about the idea of this privacy screening. If we're essentially saying the balcony remains as it is, I would caution whether you could then require privacy screening because effectively that bit of development is not changing. Just well, something to consider. Well, I, I, that, I was rather, that yeah. was, yes, that was, I was assuming that would be the case. Yeah. So if the railings remained in their present position, then uh, the screening isn't required. Yes, uh, I, no, right. I agree. I just don't think it would be reasonable. Yeah, I, that would be unreasonable. I, I, I agree with you. Um, Lloyd, Tony, what, what do you? I, no, I just think you I think that Sorry. if that's the suggestion, I think there's a better way of doing it, if I may. Okay. That would be to edit condition three yes. to delete point B. And then add another condition saying, notwithstanding the approved drawings, the terrace shall remain as existing. Right. Okay. So you think that would be a better way? Yeah, better I, I just think it just sort of right. tightens everything up and, and then won't blur the two changes, the fenestration and the terrace chairman, okay. if that's the way right. you're going. Um, Debbie Lloyd, do you, do you disagree with the discussion we've got? Or no, what do you I'm think? You're, uh, you're probably there. I mean, I. I yeah, I, I just don't agree about the um, change of that uh, but having to keep the areas as it is, but um, so, so, I'm nothing else to say. So, so in other words, so, so in other words, possibly I uh, yeah. might, might agree with you that, that you, you think the principle of what is actually proposed yeah. probably is fine, but having heard our colleagues, you get a sense that they, they think that the, that the railings should remain in the current position and you say, so, okay, fair I'm enough, we right. go along with it, yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Just just to add to the, the, the fact that you're not going to get the privacy screen, so perhaps that lady might actually still get the, the underarm going on. Yeah, I don't think we need to. I, I think that is that is a point we don't need to pursue. Um, <laughs> but, uh, all right. So okay, I think uh, we need to uh, bring this to a conclusion. So um, I'm, I'm going to suggest that we we take a vote on the recommendation to grant but with the amendment to Condition 3 um, that uh, Fiona Ray has proposed, which is that a B is struck out, and in fact a, a new 3B is added, yes, to the effect that the, um, it, makes, it makes it completely explicit that the railings, although the railings are replaced, their position remains the same. Okay? And no um, screening. Uh, yes, and there is no screening, um, no new screening. 
So on that basis, can I seek those in favour of that recommendation, please? Those against? So that's granted. That's agreed on that basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can now move on to um, actually back to the north. Uh, so we're staying with uh, Fiona yes. and uh, um, 328 Portobello Road, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, again, just drawing members' attention to the addendum report, we've got two additional objections that are very important in there with some additional photos that I think are very helpful. Um, we've also got a satellite view submitted by the agent. Um, and some amendments to the report for you to note. So planning permission is sought at this property for the removal of a non-original chimney breast, um, a side infill extension, and a new terrace at second floor level over the existing rear wing with, and the new terrace, uh, sorry, and the new infill extension. I've included this aerial image because I'm hoping it will kind of flesh out the plans you've seen uh, in the report pack. This is the location of the arched chimney, which you'll see better in photos in a moment. Down here is the location of the infill extension and the terrace proposed will go across this existing area, wrapping round onto that infill extension. This is a photograph of that existing stack to be removed. This is the photograph of the back of the property. So you can see that um, existing wall here, the, the new extension will be hidden behind that and the terrace will be above it. So have a similar appearance um, as this one at this level. These are just some photographs looking out over onto neighboring terraces nearby both sides. The existing ground floor isn't included in the application. At first floor level, we can see that that's the extension there. This is the, the wall that I showed you, that sort of white rendered wall that backs onto the street behind. So it sits behind that and the, an existing terrace that's there will be retained in that position. And then it's this terrace at second floor that will sit above the closet wing as existing or the you know, rear wing as existing and over that new extension, set 50 centimetres back from the edge. It's a roof plan. It's the existing section showing that chimney breast we talked about. That's the infill extension behind the rear wall and the terrace above. The air conditioning, there's a condition to say that's not part of this application. And that concludes my presentation, Chairman. We're recommending approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> now we have uh, speakers for this. Um, if I can ask the um, two objectors who registered, if, if you could please come up and join us. So when you're ready between you, um, please go ahead and you've got up to three minutes. And before we start and before the clock starts, I think you pointed out something wrong when you were using your cursor to show where the extension would go. You showed the, the white render. Could you just pull that up again just to be clear? Uh, it, that one. Yes. So I believe the white render is all up to the end of the white render is wall 330, that's our oh, property. Oh, it's behind the brown render, which is where the terrace and, and the infill is proposed. My apologies, you're absolutely right. Thank you very uh, much for sorry. clarifying. It's this, it's this property here. Um, so I'm a freeholder of 330, and um, because the uh, leaseholder of one of the flats within the building, 330A, um, in my submissions, um, uh, I, I mentioned that the plans and the photos submitted with the application seem to mischaracterise the relationship between the subject property <coughs> and, and the 330 and how it will impact us. Um, with all due respect, also, the officer's recommendation to accept the proposal contains significant flaws and is partially based on inaccurate and incomplete information 
Um, I hope that the addendums that we submitted yesterday, which the photographs, which haven't been put on the screen, that we do more have them in front of you, as I'm hoping that those will help to illustrate the validity of our objections, which don't come through from the images you've received. I have copies of them. Sorry, you've got them. Yeah, you have got them. Um, so, uh, the proposal seat, there's several things within this application that's being asked for, but in particular, um, the thing that's of great concern to us is the roof turrets um, over the infill, over the, over the existing, on the existing sloping uh, roof and what will now be the infill, um, because uh, that would see 10, 20 people or you know, more if they're standing and put them in touching distance of the bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchen in at the back of 330. Um, I know uh, that we, the policy CL5 requires existing properties aren't harmed due to noise, disturbance, light. Everybody before us has been talking about those things. And for us, we maintain that it, noise, nuisance, diminishing light will be an inevitable result of these proposals. Um, none of the applications, there have been three applications so far submitted by the applicant have contained any noise or light impact reports, um, in spite of our request by the planning officer for them to do so, and we believe it's because they would prove such detriment. Um, there are two terraces on the application, not just that one, so obviously that not uh, exacerbates the noise. Um, and although, yes, there is frequent mention in the um, planning officer's uh, recommendations, that there are other existing terraces in the area, as the applicant has illustrated in one of his submissions. None of them have direct line of sight, all of them are further away, and none of them cause this increased sense of enclosure by the occupants of 330 having to live behind their closed curtains because they'd be so closely overlooked by this particular terrace um, that is being proposed. Um, there's also, the application also, includes three for three air conditioning units on the roof but there's no mention of them as far as i could see in the planning officer's uh, recommendations at all and there's been no noise thank you i think time is more or less up did you want to add just a very yeah. brief comment uh, <laughs> me so well, yeah with that roof terrace on that rear closet wing mm -hmm. it will be overlooking seven windows actually so there's uh there's one window which was be open from one of our other residents who's here in the room. If their windows open in summertime, there'll be a direct view into their bed, laying in their bed. Also, the two windows on the rear um, of the, our building on 330, you can be able to look directly into the beds as well as both of those windows. So it would ruin the privacy there. And then what's quite unique, because they keep on comparing our rear closet to everyone else's and the other extensions you can see there, is that we have windows, four windows as well, two which are on bathrooms, so there'd be a direct view into a shower, direct view onto a toilet, and two windows which are a direct view into a yeah. kitchen. So just for the thank, thank you very much. Um, now, if I could ask the, um, uh, the applicant uh, and the architect to come forward, perhaps grab another chair, bring it, so Absolutely. if you could just move slightly down and then... Uh, okay. So in similar fashion, she's got a bit over. But please go ahead when you're ready. Uh -huh. um, good evening. My name is Andrew Calfus. I'm the owner of Puto Portobello Road, which consists of a masonette flat and a commercial shop below. We purchased the building uh, last year, which is in very poor condition, um, requiring upgrading. Um, to, and we've designed looking to create a modern three bedroom flat within the building's tra traditional fabric. In addition, we intend to upgrade the commercial space with new services to enhance uh, and continue the regeneration of that section of Portobello Road. Uh, prior to our ownership, the flat had uh, been rented to four sharers, allowing for up to eight people to reside within it. Our intent is to create a family flat um, to house a family looking to live within the area. This is our, in our opinion, will create a nice living environment for those living in and around the property. I'd like to pass you over to Robert, our architect, who will address the objections uh, and talk you through the specifics of the application. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so I think those changes were, were 
well presented, uh, and uh, I just uh, want to add that uh, uh, those changes will enable us to create a modern and, uh, in our opinion, a very high quality family flat, uh, which uh, should have a positive uh, impact on the neighboring area. Um, I want to also stress that this uh, proposal was uh, discussed uh, during the pre planning uh, process and uh, all the concerns were addressed, uh, which current uh, proposal uh, reflects. Um, the, the, the building is uh, not in a conservation area, it's not a listed building. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we are aware that some of the neighbors got con concerns and they um, objected. And um, those objections are mainly uh, um, I read uh, around the, the noise. Um, they believe it will have negative impact on, on their properties, but they enjoy very similar uh, properties. Both uh, adjoining properties got uh, terraces um, at the rear. Uh, in, in terms of uh, noise, I want to, I would like to, to put this into perspective. But this is uh, this this photo shows there is a portable row, there is a, a bond charge row. This is an uh, area in a, in a busy city, a vibrant area with many cafes, restaurants, which have got a, a seating areas outside. So the noise is mainly created from, from uh, really the area, not the, those small terraces. And we uh, showed one of our fo photos, uh, which is satellite view, which shows uh, at least I uh, counted 10 terraces, which, which are on, the, on, the, on this photo. Uh, so I don't think... Uh, really what we are proposing will have a meaningful uh, impact. Uh, in, in terms of uh, loss of light, this is, uh, I think, some misunderstanding because uh, we are not uh, building uh, over, uh, over part of what, as one of the objectors uh, suggested. The extension is an infill uh, extension, which is entirely behind the back uh, wall, which uh, was shown on the previous photo. Uh, in, in addition, we also removing the old uh, chimney, which is not original. This uh, chimney on its own creates a sense of enclosure, in my opinion. And by removing it, we are actually improving the situation. The new tires, which we are proposing, will have a railings which are set back from the uh, perimeter of this terrace. None of those terraces which are in place currently got the same mitigating measures. Yes, the, the, yeah. yes. Uh, welcome sorry, to... Sorry, time, time is more or less up, so but there may well be questions. Um, probably Sue, you'd like to go first. I think that is... Sorry, um, Toby, sorry. Um, yeah, for the, um, uh, for the aging. So um, I just want to, so the, so the objectors brought up this issue of um, increased views into more you know, bathrooms and, and, and all of that. I mean, I'll be asking this from the um, offices as well. Um, I mean, what's your, what's your response? Like, is, is, is that? No, we, we to, to be honest, my, my response to that, uh, I am surprised with some of those objections because uh, uh, as those uh, photos demonstrate, we, we've got on both sides very similar terraces. So, so those neighbors obviously enjoy this, this outdoor living, which uh, we would like to have the same right uh, for, for our property. Yes, in terms of the terrace, uh, we, in terms of the size, to be honest, our terrace is even smaller because of this uh, railing, which is set back from the perimeter. So even including the part over the infield, it still is uh, one square meter uh, smaller than the, the, the existing terrace over the, the rear wing of the adjoining uh, property. In, in terms of the, the main terrace, the main terrace is set back three and a half meters from the back wall and 60 centimeters from the front part of the wall. Front part of the wall is 1.3 meter over finished uh, uh, level of the terrace. Yes, so this is not really a, a possibility of uh, see the edge of the rear extension from the, the top terrace. Yes? Okay. I, yeah, I would be interested in if it's all right to... Uh, yeah, just, to so yeah, just, I mean, ours is the end of terrace building, so our terrace isn't overlooking anyone's bedrooms. And so I think the difference here is their terrace will be kissing, actually, two bedroom windows and directly overlooking another bedroom window, which is on the ground floor, uh, which is a roof light, you know, 
looking down onto someone's bed. So I think that's the difference there is about the privacy. And I think they keep on talking about the light and the terrace and other terraces, but it's about direct look into, you know, a private bathroom, two private, three private bedrooms and a kitchen. So I think that's the main point here as well. And they're comparing it to apples for apples and it's not apples for apples. If you look at the other terraces, they're not overlooking other people's bedrooms. Some of them are brought all the way forward. Some of them are on the roof, at the back of the roof. So I think, you know, comparing apples to apples and terraces to terraces, it's a completely unique, isolated situation here. Just very briefly, very briefly. <laughs> it's, a, it's the quiet end of Portobello, I should say, and as he's mentioned, it's the end of terrace, and all of this new development here is because of the development around. There aren't any external spaces, so this will be an introduction of a new space, and you say that the chimney it gives a sense of enclosure. Well, it doesn't because nobody has to close their curtain because of the chimney. They can still have uh, open curtains and have whatever daylight they have. So it's, it, it, it doesn't lose light because it's existing. What you're doing will create increased loss of light. Yeah, if I could just say very quickly, that, uh, um, we have exactly the same issue on the other side. The terrace, which you can see on the other side, looks directly into what the rear bedroom so we are in exactly the same position. So I think that claim, the other thing we were looking to do is put planters all the way around, which is part of our proposal, which you can see to, to pro provide that screen to mitigate those issues. So we have, that has been a major concern of ours. Okay, through the whole that's, that's great. Um, so you, you well, no, I, I, I was going to raise the same issue that there is obviously the terrace here has some sort of screening. So you're, you're saying you've suggested. We've, yeah, if, if you have a look, we've got planters all the way, it's part of you have a look on, on the, the drawings. Yeah. I mean, will that go over one point one meters? The plant is. It says only one point one meters. Yeah, the, the building regulations require uh, to provide the railings of one point one meters. There was a stipulation of the plan was that we had the balustrade, the back to back balustrade, which is what we've done. The broad provides more privacy. We've suggested the planters. The lattice that is on the other terrace provides no privacy. You can look straight through, you can see straight through that into our bedroom windows. We are we're subject to exactly the same thing. Um, the, the, there's, 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 there's Sorry, the there exists already. So. You should be answering questions from the members, no, yeah, not yeah, yeah. 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 It's not a general discussion. Sure, sure, sure. Um, sorry, do you want to take up any further comments? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, Luke. So if you return to your seat. Uh, so, questions to uh, talk to us about this. Um, any questions? So, yeah, I mean, if you don't mind just picking up this general issue, because it seems very unclear to me. There's a lot of back and forth and Right, so in terms of privacy, um, what's your, you know, what's your assessment, what's your position on that? I think probably the most helpful photo is actually the one submitted by the objector yesterday in your addendum report. Um, I don't know if there's a paper copy for everybody in front of you, because it'd be really helpful if you turn to that. It's, it's yeah. page two of, of this section, and it just shows you the back of all those properties. Sorry, sorry Katie, making it. I'm not sure everyone's got that. So I think that really provides a helpful context. Now, this new terrace will introduce new views. We're not disputing that. There will be new views from that terrace into neighbours that don't exist at that level. That said, officers have reviewed it in context. We see that as there is an arrangement where there's mutual overlooking between them. There is existing harm from the terraces looking into the the property itself and in this context we think it's an acceptable relationship. The relationship will change and there will be new views, we're, we're not disputing that, um, but it's that balance that, um, you know, existing mutual overlooking that exists. So we have concluded that it's acceptable in that context. There are those helpful kind of design features that have been included. So the railings are set back 50 centimetres. So that will limit people going right to the edge, looking down into the bedroom window that's within that existing light well. So that definitely will help because they won't be able to get as close. 
as potentially existing people could kind of hang their head over um, on neighbouring properties. So it is an on-balance recommendation, um, but our conclusion in that particular context is it's acceptable. Uh, just, just also just to clarify, so you've got the railings and then the, uh, the planting is on the inside of the railings. Yes, that's what's shown. I mean, the planting isn't secured by um, a condition. Okay. So we've got a condition that secures the railings and that they'll be black painted metal. Um, but it's it's more difficult to secure that planters remain. Um, we could potentially ask for details of what planting could be introduced there. That would be within um, members' gift to do that. Um, but we can confirm that it will definitely be 50 centimetres off because okay. that's on the drawings. So there could be a form of either a condition or an advisory? Yeah, I mean, if, if it was important to your decision making, I would recommend a condition yeah. um, rather than inf an informative. Even though that's their clear intention, an informative wouldn't secure it for you. So uh, just to further to add to that, if that would help with the objections, that it wouldn't just be set back by the 50 centimetres, but it would actually, rather than uh, the, their proposal, it would be a condition that there would be planting that would mean you can't lean over the bushes and then over the railings. That would add an extra level of protection. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just follow yeah, up. Yeah. Um, would it be possible in a condition to just sort of stipulate not that it could be, you know, it could be in a part or it could be a, you know, a railing or whatever. But the important thing is that, you know, that it's not possible to look over. It's more that we can, can we actually stick with, you know, the intention, the action that we want to stop rather than just the stuff that we put there. Yeah, through you, Chairman, I've actually had a, an idea, which is we could say the flat roof area indicated outside of the railings labelled terrace shall be prohibited from any use. So we could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, like similarly to a flat roof of the extension. Again, the, the terrace part here, in this location, is new roof, so you could potentially limit the use of that part of the roof or for details of it. There, there would be options for getting details of it as long as you're explicit about what you want to achieve in terms of the size of the terrace. So, okay, so uh, colleagues making a decision Hamish, Sonia, do you, do you sort of go along with this train of thought if we if we put these conditions about the terrace? I think I think given the degree of mutual overlooking, I think just saying it's not acceptable is it puts us on quite um, shaky ground, really. But I think these these conditions about the the railings and then details of the planting, which is something that can be put in by condition. I think is something that's probably. I think we are we are able to do it on the on the railings. Yes, I agree. On the planting, I think my observation would be, my view would be in effect you should consider them as an addition, really, because they're not a permanent structure. You know, plants can die out, can yeah. just can come out and change. So it's a nice to have, I suppose, but I'm not sure we can really consider it as being an integral part of the design. It's not a permanent structure. Could, could there be a condition that? that says that at any point in time there'd be some sort of attempt to some, some sort of privacy screening or planting. So, it, you know, yeah, I mean, I, actually, I think that's what I think. but that there could yeah, be other, yeah. other ways of... I mean, it's... it's of, <coughs> yeah, the, the, and so maintained. Yes. Can, can that apply to details of planting? I think, think that, the best think? way of doing that would be to add a new condition that says right. details of landscaping for around the edge of right. the roof shall be submitted and approved to show freestanding planters and or similar with yes. an informative that says committee want to have a guarantee that this isn't a usable area and it um, okay. you know, will soften the development. I something. think it's also the important thing is the purpose of it. So, you know, plants can die and they can be there for for aesthetic reasons as well, for the purpose reasons. Yeah, I think that's the purpose. Yeah, I think the purpose is, is is the legitimate point that if you if you have a railing that's right at the edge of the terrace, somebody if they wanted to go right up there and sort of stare down obliquely into other people's properties. Yeah. 
and we're, we're trying to make that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and any condition needs to have a reason for the yeah, true, that's for why so we can make exactly. that very clear. And it's an amenity of maintenance, isn't it? It's not for aesthetic necessarily, yeah, it's, it's about residential yeah. amenities. Yeah. And as the applicant is already proposing some form of that anyway, yeah, it would seem serious stuff. Yeah. I think if that's your intention, the cleanest way would be yeah. to just say the area outside the railings cannot be used at any time as a terrace, mm. and then the position of the railings is then fixed. If they have planters that don't need permission, great, but we don't need to worry about the maintenance of them, but they will never be able to use that edge. Right. Okay, so does that make sense? Yes, yeah. and that would be another condition. Right. Yeah. yeah, an additional condition if, if members okay. are minded. All right, so I'd like to, I'd like to take a vote. So the recommendation is to grant, but with this additional condition that we've just just discussed just now. Okay. Yeah, I think it's two, isn't there? There's, yeah. there's one about not using the terrace outside the railing area, yes. and then the other one about details of landscaping. I, so I, what did you... I think the conclusion was no need for the details because they just want to prohibit the use completely. So we yes. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, we, you know, in fact, we've, we've simplified moved that discussion. Okay. Yeah. So on that basis, um, can I see those in favour of the recommendation that okay, so that's agreed. Thank you very much, Lee. Okay, um, very good. Well, in that case, if we can carry on now, um, and we will uh, stay in the North Park to a Queensdale Hall. Thank you, Chairman. Just moving on to number eight, Queensdale Walk. Um, again, draw your attention to the addendum report um, with some edits to the report itself and also the amendments to two conditions and their wording. So just turning to the slide, um, Queensdale Walk uh, is just shown on the image here. It's a, a muse property that runs behind Norland Square. I think this aerial image is helpful to show you that kind of type context that it's within. This is the application property um, for which planning commission is sought, and it's for the remodelling of the existing house, the creation of a new basement under the house, and ground and first floor extensions. And there'll be other external alterations as part of that, which I'll show you on the drawings. This is that sort of type muse context I highlighted in the aerial image. Some photos of the rear elevation for context. I just draw members' attention to the, the rear extensions at the back of um, the properties either side. This is the existing front elevation. The property is in the centre of that image with the two very faint but red lines either side. And the proposed. The rear elevation existing. And again, proposed. This is the existing section, and to show you the basement level, it's here underneath the house at 50% per garden with topsoil above it. These are the um, floor plans, and it's just helpful to see the rear building line as existing and proposed on each level. That's the existing first floor plan, existing and again proposed. And I found these um, visuals, whilst not approved drawings, helpful just to understand that context. So we talk in the report about the first floor rear addition, that's here, and that relates to the building line established next door. The ground floor relating to that established building line again that we discuss in the report. It's another image there. Neighbours are understandably concerned about the construction process as part of this application, the amount of soil that will be, need to be removed and so on. We have received a construction traffic management plan alongside other supporting information with this application. Now, the construction traffic management plan shows how they would do this in, in, as proposed now, um, whilst retaining sort of access down the carriageway, and it would be using narrow-bodied vehicles, including... Uh, narrow-bodied concrete mixers, and we have that information up front. Officers have still recommended that uh, CTMP is attached because it's very important that they capture the time when they're building, so all the information um, of other sites that may be happening when they get around to building it, because people don't necessarily build it out very, very quickly. Um, we have the whole suite of basement conditions on this application, 
that I know have fed into members' hard work on making sure that basement um, excavations in this borough are dealt with as far as we possibly can under planning. So all of those have been included and subject to those conditions, um, officers are recommending approval. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Um, now we have further speakers for this. Um, can I ask um, uh, Mrs. Palmer and uh, uh, Mr. Blackfell, if you like, come um, uh, please. Mm -hmm. Enjoy And uh, thank you so much for bearing with us. It's becoming quite a long evening. And uh, thank you very much indeed. So please, when you're uh, ready, um, Green, uh, my name's Adam Raphael. I'm with my fellow resident, Rachel Palmer. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, all members of the Queensdale Walk Residents Association who are unanimously opposed to this planning application, as is the Northern Conservation Society. On May the 10th last year, the Council's then senior planning officer, Mrs. Stephanie Malik, wrote to the applicant, quote, the proposal is for a substantial demolition of a positive building and would need to provide substantial public benefits to outweigh the harm caused. There is no public benefit were this planning application to be approved. It would in fact do considerable public harm to a conservation area. The destruction of a small, modest, two-storey terraced house and its replacement by a four-storey house with basement would undermine the distinctive nature and character of the walk. There are a few such remaining communities in Norland where the original spirit of place still exists. It's described by the Norland Conservation Society as, quotes, an attractive row of small, fragile, two-storey cottages that is a rarity in the borough. This character should not be jeopardised, not least because it would be in breach of the Council's new and additional responsibility for place. A precedent for refusal does exist. In refusing PP 170695 in 2018, your committee described the walk as a street of small houses and stated the development would reduce the supply of small family houses in the vicinity, contrary to the development plan. Proposed in large house at number eight, with basement, a prime example of overdevelopment, would deplete the stock of small houses suitable for the local residents wishing to downsize, as well as for young couples and single people. It's not disputed that number eight needs renovation, but not, not I stress, by doubling its size with a basement. The history of flash flooding in the immediate area should also be taken into account. In 2021, the cellar of number 20 flooded, and the risk of flooding is officially forecast to only increase in the future. Finally, the dig is bound to have a damaging impact on the physical and mental health of the walk's elderly residents from noise, pollution, and traffic. Though a dust assessment is not yet I understand a formal planning requirement. It's a grave issue for those residents who have breathing problems and are at home most, during most of the day. To restate, every member of the Queensdale Walk Residents Association urges this committee to refuse permission for a basement at number eight. It does not provide a public benefit. Instead, it would do public harm by undermining the character of the walk and would diminish the stock of small houses even worse, if the substantial demolition is allowed to go ahead, it will be a most damaging precedent, which over time will destroy the modest character of Queensdale Walk. I trust that this committee will listen to this unanimous view from the Residents Association. Communities do matter. Their view should not be lightly tossed aside, as I fear your officer's report has done. Thank you. A little bit of time. I don't know how, you, how much time I've got. Two, I'm not really prepared. So you you have a um, a letter from our councillor. Will you be reading that out, or could you? Um, could well, you we have, have it. it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, can I can I read it out? Um, you can't read the whole letter, I'm afraid, but we can no, proceed no. it. Okay. Um, um, 
But can I read a couple of paragraphs? Uh, well, you could read a sentence or two, because I'm afraid the time is more than Yeah, I know. Is up. But, but, yeah. but he, he would have the time if he came here. Um, well, unfortunately, we've received the letter. You will no, see the letter. We'll we'll take it into so. account. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you. there's not much else to add. I, I will add. Um, but this, but, but it is a proposal for uh, to place a very small house um, to become a reasonably sized family house, and the plans show the very substantial demolition the plans, which we haven't seen. I haven't seen. Yeah. Very substantial demolition from ground to roof, plus excavation, a proportionally e extensive basement, roughly 500 cubic meters of waste, which is huge. Um, and it's, a, a, um, it's against all precedence of any building in the Thank you. Is Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so if you remain where you are. Um, can I ask, I think we have, um, I think mean, it's the applicant, in fact. It's, uh, that Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening, Commission members and dear Rachel and, and Adam. My name is Tim Omsen, and I'm the owner and occupier of A Things Dale Walk and the applicant for this planning application together with my wife, Francine, who is present here as well. I equally serve as the secretary of the Things Walk Residents Association. We have lived in the house over the last seven years and are raising our three children, two, four, and six years old, who are go to school and have their friends in the area. With our kids growing up, we're looking to remodel our house and add some much needed living space so we can stay in Oro for years to come. As with any building project, we're conscious of the construction impact our effort will have on our direct neighbors. We will take all measures to ensure this is appropriately managed and will work hard throughout the duration of the project to limit any disturbance cost. We hope you would support our application today. We feel the proposed design is in keeping with the character of the walk and meeting all applicable local design and planning regulations. We have gone through two rounds of pre-apps and have accepted and incorporated all the feedback received in the current application. As an example, we've changed the frontal position and reduced the window heights and substantially reduced the demolition. Our proposed extension now brings the house in line with adjoining properties and the facade will be retained with minor modifications only. We also remove an ugly shed to bring space back to the open gardens, which is so typical for Northern Square. And we are glad to report that during our extensive community engagement, our neighbors were kind enough to give us their support for our above ground design. The real worry from our neighbors is the basement that we would like to add to create an extra bedroom for our daughter and some further living space. It would be good to start by saying that basements are already present in the walk, only three doors down at number 11. Earlier, planning was given for a basement at number 9 and number 10, and in fact one is being built right now just on the road. As such, it's not a new feature in the street, and the proposed basement, we believe, complies with all local policies. Further mentioned concerns around flood risk, noise and vibration impact, and traffic management, which we take very serious. We believe have been addressed by following guidance from our expert consultants, as well as adhering to all the local policies. During our community engagement, we have listened carefully to our neighbors' concerns and explained the measures we will take to, where possible, protect them. We are a young family. We have a strong interest to maintain good relationships with our community and our neighbours, people we have grown very fond of over the years. And we will continue to listen to their concerns and mitigate them where possible. We hope the committee can grant us permission to provide for a growing family so we can stay in our home for years to come. We thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, comments, uh, questions? Uh, good night, Good night. Good night. Sorry. To the objectors. Um, so the applicant mentioned that there are a number of other houses on the street with basements. Um, what was your experience during the construction of those basements? And what's your response to the that it look like it's necessarily the action of the Well, number 13, where there was a basement, it proved us up pretty bad. 
uh, the Labour, if you look at the objections, has listed all the problems that occurred in that basement development. Um, that, as far as I know, is the only actual basement in that walk. Uh, there have been applications for other houses, but the basements did not proceed. But the one example, it, it led to flooding, it led to noise, it, 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 it led to considerable difficulties, and that is in, in the objections uh, as from her. I mean, obviously, I have no first hand knowledge of this, but it, she, she has testified to, to, to what the problems were in that basement. And I think also, may I say, is that as a previous part of a previous period of council policy, but I think it listened, I hope, listened, I, I believe, listened less to communities, and I think the council now rightly is listening very, very seriously to community concerns. I do think it is interesting that there is such a unanimous objection. Tim Ant and his family are a very nice family, but the problem is, this is a real community. If people are subjected to a year's noise and vibration and dirt, plus also all the destroying of a character, the, the relations cannot be good. And I would be, if I was in his shoes, I would be very nervous of coming back to that community. It's a very, very tight, small community of only muses are. Anyone else? Um, can I ask um, the applicant actually um, about the construction traffic management plan? Um, because, I mean, clearly, well, we've seen one of the early photographs, and I actually, I, I, I've been to the walk, I'm, I'm familiar with. You know, it is quite a small scale, and of course, it's a cul-de-sac. And uh, uh, particularly as you go further down towards the end, it, 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 you know, it is it is quite a cramped area, um, certainly for construction traffic. Mm -hmm. um, would, would you, if we were minded to grant this, um, would you be agreeable to the the actual detail of the traffic management plan having to committee? And possibly specialists um, who had actually written this, you know, they, they would have to come here and explain precisely how this was going to work. Is that is that something acceptable? I think we'd be open for any reasonable suggestion. I think we have uh, taken the advice of Paul Muse Associates, who is a specific traffic management consultant business, um, who has done all the modeling of how trucks would turn in the street. We have taken on board all the recommendations from uh, the planning officer and all local policies not to have trucks idling. Um, we feel we have done our bit, what we, what we can do at this point. If this is a, an important consideration for the committee, I would welcome that. Good questions. Um, so, I have, okay. yeah. one more question to mm. um, objectives. Um, so if we look beyond the construction of the, of the basement, um, obviously, I, don't, there, I note that there are many, many objections to this. So, um, and that possibly most of those relate to, to the, the basement. But beyond that, what are your thoughts on the, the, the proposed facade? I find it difficult, just based on these pictures, of course, to see how much of the character would be maintained externally. So, I, I want to have any thoughts on external. I, th I think the thing about this application is that the external character, it's always been a slightly quirky street. So it's not one of the terraces that people have to comply with. Mm -hmm. But it, it is all about uh, the, um, the context and character and the type of housing, the small housing in area which is actually, I don't know if you know, is completely surrounded by these um, larger houses or family houses, it's almost um, becoming monoculture in Norland. And I've only been there 10 years, but I find that quite disturbing when uh, we need so much more diversity. Could I just briefly add to it? I'm 85, I don't know what age or age is, but we're rather typical of the people who live there. Old, most not all, but mostly very old. Yeah. And my one Rachel's neighbour is well, is ninety years old. It, it, you can imagine the sort of impact this sort of development has on them. This is why uh, when this application was granted 
Mr. Hampton is totally legally able to carry on with this. But I, in the end, I don't think it's about total just, I mean, your committee has to be concerned with legality, but it isn't just concerned with legality, it's concerned with community. So just to clarify, there, there isn't necessarily a concern about the external aesthetic, it's more about the size and the, the exactly. use and the base. Well, it doesn't keep uh, any of the, it well, there was one of the news, but a sort of part play. If your committee were to recommend um, that the that redevelopment of the property should carry on without the basement, I think members would, even whatever the disruption would be caused or impact would be caused, we would accept all that. We think that's a perfectly reasonable request. It is digging out huge amounts of earth with the vibration, the dirt and everything, plus also the changing of the character of the walk, which is really what upsets us. Just to follow up on that, of course. Um, but we, we, so I'm just trying to pass out. We're talking about the construction of the basement is one thing, and the, the actual, you know, basement immediately appears is that do we have the same problems? It, because we're talking about the character of the walk, and that's where, where I'm getting a, a bit tripped up is that there are already, you know, uh, extra level basements around. So it, it seems like what I'm what I'm hearing is that it's, it's, it is to do with the construction specifically. It's the, the period of time and the you know all the earth and the traffic. And all of that. That's part of it, but I, I do think of a four-story house instead of a two-story. None of the other houses are four stories. None of them, and so it it would change the character. I mean, the other thing is, of course, the economic aspect of it. If this is allowed. And frankly, you're just going to be able to put on large sums of money onto each and every house that would be worth another half a million pounds. I, I, I find that destruction of a community because of that economic interest. I, I, you know, I don't doubt what Mr. Anton says at all. He would like to build for his family. But it, it does actually change the character of the nature of this walk. I think it also puts at risk the conservation area because it's a whole new kind of house in the middle of the terraces. Um, I get back to you, you just picked on the subject I wanted to look at. Um, uh, it is a conservation area, uh, it is a muse, it is a concert. It is a one way, very narrow one way street. I've actually been there because I had a look at this. Uh, I'm very sympathetic towards it, what the applicant is trying to achieve. But you cannot ignore the overwhelming 46 objections, ward councillor, northern conservation area. Um, this will benefit your family, no doubt, but to the detriment of everybody else that is looking at this. Um, so I just think, ask the applicant, how do you square that circle? It's not a planning consideration, I get. That's a community consideration. We, we want to stay in this community. And that's why we're extremely considerate and careful in how we have engaged our neighbours early on. We have brought this to the Queen's Law Residence Association, we have engaged with the Northern Conservation Society, we have sat down with each and every one of our neighbours, we have offered our structural engineers to our neighbours because I think the valid concern for our direct neighbours is the structural integrity of their property. And I would never compromise their structural integrity because it's their safety and their health. So we've set them down with our structural engineer to help them understand what would happen, how it would happen, and how we would protect them to safeguard their home. These are a couple of the examples that we have taken in order to, despite undoubted impact that this will cause, to work with our neighbors. And secondly, we will, even during construction, be good neighbors. I think we have good foresight of when periods of higher disturbance will be you know, occurring at which point we can sit down with our neighbours, explain to them when this will happen, and you know, some of them have country houses, some of them can go for the shop. These are short periods of times during which we can work with them to minimise them. Okay. Um, thank you very much indeed. So thank you. Go and speak to them, please. Thank you. Uh, so questions to questions to officers. Um, you both like get that song. One question. Yeah. Um, the objector mentioned that there's a basement of about 30 or number 30. Um, 
and that that led to flooding and considerable noise. I wonder if you could. I just did a very quick search um, on our database for basements along um, Queensdale Walk itself. Number nine has an approval back in 2007. I'm not sure whether it was implemented. Number 11 in 2008 and number 10 in 2017. Um, so we've had three basements permitted along that walk in the past. Um, I would say that now we've got much, much tighter conditions regarding basements, including for flooding. So members will note in our recommendation um, that we've got information securing suds, um, drainage information, to make sure that we're going as far as we possibly can through the quarter planning to make sure that there is no flooding impact. I don't have any details about number 13 having flooded um, within the submission, but what I can be confident in is that we're going as far as we, we can with uh, conditions 12 and 13 to hope that in planning terms that would not happen again if, if it indeed did happen. Thank you. Uh, Chevy. Thank you. Uh, this is a quick question. This is about conservation area rules. So, um, and I, you know, I probably should know this, but when we're talking about that, um, the objectives talk about there being an effect of actually uh, just sort of drive, essentially just driving up, you know, values of properties, and that just changing. Um, what's a sort of, what is the is there a plan in framing for that sort of concern that we should be talking about? That's a really interesting question again. I don't think we can, we can't refuse it in principle on them extending the home, similarly to the one we discussed earlier. But there was a refusal which um, the speaker mentioned um, from number 47 Norland Square. They wanted to join up with the Muse property behind and they originally proposed to join them up and retain a studio flat within it. And members resolved to refuse that. That was in 2018. So that was the refusal we were they were talking about. Um, that is not comparable to this, uh, you know, homeowners extension, which whilst it's very large and will have an impact, we, we all agree, including the applicant themselves, but the impact was very different there in terms of the housing stock and the impact it would have. So for this one, we see this as a householder extension and that's how we've treated it. Um, my only uh, reservation is with, with the chairs with the uh, traffic management office because that is going to be a huge undertaking uh, with the restrictions on there. Um, could could uh, you just suggest that we could bring this back uh, with further uh, scrutiny of that? That could be. Yes, absolutely. It's been done uh, in times before, quite often in similar situations where we've got very, very tight muses and members want the confidence that it can be done as best possible, if you like. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Okay. Well, I think as um, Stray has pointed out, um, then the Essentially, is compliant with, with our policies. Um, it's clearly um, thoroughly unpopular um, for, for you know understandable reasons because of the the, the disruption that a development at this particular area is going to cause. But but in terms of policy terms, I'm struggling really to to find a, a way in which it could be refused. I I, I think in I think in terms of trying to do something to address the concerns, I think probably bringing the traffic management plan back to the committee might be a, a reasonable way forward um, because it would, it, would, it would oblige a further discussion about the exact details. I mean, for example, uh, I know an objector pointed out um, somebody who, uh, you know, suffered I think there's some from asthma, for example. The, the, you know, the timings of the work take place and, and the exact details about um, noise and vibration and dust and things like that. Um, I think it, if we can, if we were able to go to the absolute limit of what we are able to do, I think that probably is, is, is something that we, we should do. Um, what do people feel about this? What, what do you no, very much for that. I think that's really important. I feel that um, it is a village-like walk 
and that that character is surely what the conservation area is meant to protect. So I, I think that some weight needs to be given to that. Yes. Notwithstanding the fact that there is um, or that there is another basement. But I, I'm sympathetic to, 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 I, to what the applicant is trying to do. I think the presence of, of each pyramid, the, the fact that other basement applications have been granted, um, some of them are actually quite old under previous mm -hmm. policies, but the fact is we now have more up-to-date policies and, and this, this has to be considered compliant with those policies. So it's, you know, we're limited, I think, in what we can, what we can do. Um, Amish, any particular talk? Yeah, it's just, I'm sort of a bit struggling with it. I mean, if we took Aid Queen's and walk in isolation, just looked at what the Attica is proposing, and the surface of it seems entirely, entirely reasonable. But once we put it back into its wider context, <clears throat> Queenstown Walk is placed in the conservation area. Yeah, I do wonder about the impact on character. I mean, it's just a classic example of an application where an individual has sort of merits. It's laudable, but once you consider it in a broader context, it is transforming into a four-story home, which does alter the character of the street. I guess the question is, uh, do we consider that? To be harmful, and yeah, I agree. If we were to grant it, the CTMP that should all come back, and we should examine it in more detail. Okay. But yes, it's um, that fundamental point about whether it would be as harmful. Okay. Well, in that case, I think what we should do is um, let's have a vote on the recommendation to grant, but with the understanding that if we were to go in that route, the CTMP would need to come back to committee. So can I see those in favour of pursuing that course of action, please? Those in favour? Those against? Are you, are you against? So that is granted by three votes to two, but with the CTMP, Construction Traffic Management Plan, having to come back to a committee at a future further examination. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Philip, swap, swap seats, give you a break. I was going to say. Um, thank you. So, if we can now. Um, thank you. So, if we can now. Uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, we, we need to move on. So, if we can now move to the south pack, please. And uh, Emma, you're going to be presenting um, 25 Old Church Street. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman, and good evening, members. So this is an application for the uh, infilling of an existing single-storey extension, the replacement of its roof, the revision of eight roof lights, and alterations to the fenestration to the rear of the property. So here we have a site location plan, and you can see... Uh, outlined in the red hash where the infill extension will take place to this existing single storey extension. So these are just some site views here. So you can see where the red dot is, that's number 25. To its north is number 27. And if you take a look to your side elevation to the left hand side of the screen, you'll see a flat roof building which contains numbers 6 and 7 red anchor close. And then this is just the rear, and you can see at the bottom of that red outline the properties that align on Red Anchor Close and the extent of the access to that property from Old Church Street. So these are some existing photos of the site. So you can see the existing single storey extension there. And then these are some photos of the internal courtyard and indeed the internal amenity space of number 27 Old Church Street. These are some photos taken from the perspective of Red Anchor Close, and that is the parking space associated with number six, uh, Red Anchor Close, I believe. And um, you can see the, the extent of the single storey extension as it stands just in the corner there. 
So these are the proposed plans. So you can see at the top there, the extent of the new roof, which would be a pitched gable and the provision of the roof lights. This is the proposed first floor plan where you'll see again, the roof lights on top of the roof. Uh, and then as we got the building, there's some just some minor changes to the fenestration here where they're changing some of the, the windows, one to a door and the others to sash windows, which would be an improvement on the existing. That's just some comparison photos. So to the left hand side of your screen, you'll see the proposed and uh, to the right, the existing. Uh, this is the section. So you'll see on the right hand side of the screen there, the proposal in terms of the new roof. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, there are no speakers for this. Um, so, uh, questions to to uh, officers? Any thoughts? Any questions? Um, Yes, well, there are a number of objections um, in the no speakers. Um, and, and quite a few of them focus on, on the, the um, impact on that. Are you able to speak to that? Yes, so uh, a number of the objectors have brought up concerns in terms of light pollution relating yeah. to the roof lights. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the proposal, it has been amended to reduce the roof lights from 12 to 8, which was something the applicant did um, at officer's request, although not a requirement. I think when you look at the backs of these properties, all of these properties will admit residential light. Um, and in the context, the provision of the roof lights isn't considered to provide anything significantly in terms of light pollution in comparison with its existing context, which is fairly dense. Um, equitably, there are some roof lights located on Red Anchor Close, um, which, you know, also again admit uh, some residential light. You can see those just there. So it, it wouldn't be out of context for the character of that area or anything we would consider to significantly harm the unity. Okay. Thank you. Any other points? Um, no. Well, in that case, um, and it's quite, quite a complicated application, but I think, I think if that, I think if that point about um, the light has, you know, the, the roof lights has been addressed, um, then I think that probably is, is certainly helpful. Um, so, if there are no other questions, we can um, close. The recommendation is to approve with the conditions attached. Can I think those in favour, please? Um, Sonia, yeah. you're presenting, so that's um, granted by um, uh, four votes um, to none with uh, one abstention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can we now move um, to the application in Phil Beach Gardens, please? Of course, thank you very much, Chair. So this is an application for a single storey outbuilding to the rear garden of um, 38 Phil Beach. Uh, the garden is in the would be in the private ownership of flat two, which is a lower ground floor flat. So these are just some aerial views of the rear of the property. You'll note that the rear boundary aligns with infrastructure in association with London Underground. So these are some photos of the rear garden and you can see those rail lines and infrastructure to the rear of the property there. These are some further um, photos of the rear elevation of 38 Phil Beach. You'll see that the garden is slightly raised and flat to sit at the lower ground floor there, highlighted by that yellow brick extension at the bottom. This is the site location plan illustrating the siting of the outbuilding. These are the elevations of the outbuilding. The outbuilding would contain a, a WC. This is a sectional drawing just showing the relationship of the outbuilding with the wider host building. This is a drainage plan that's been proposed, which includes an attenuation tank for surface water runoff. 
And then this is a site location, a site plan from a previous consent which has been implemented uh, in 2020 where a garden shed has been approved in a similar location to the outbuilding of its stands. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, an, an upgrading of a shed, essentially. Um, I think, um, I guess the, 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 the critical point here is that this building with LMC is fairly substantial. It, it can only be used in the context of being part of, of, of the, the existing lower ground floor flat. Uh, it can't be used as a separate dwelling. That would require a separate planning permission. That would require separate consent, yeah. and we've placed an informative on the application yeah. for making that clear. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, just a note that it, it, right. it has objections from the Old Society and the Resident Association, but that's just an observation. Well, I think I think there's concern about accommodation actually. Yeah. Be becoming um, a sort of Airbnb place or a, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, that is something um, a, a lot of people are concerned about. Okay, so um, bearing all of that in mind, um, the recommendation, Toby, do you want to just ask one, us? Yeah, yes, of course. Just clarification about the, um, about the flooding risk, because it, it has flooded before the basement of that property. Am I, am I reading this wrong? Sorry. No, I'm not aware that the property has. I think there's some objections oh, that there has been flooding elsewhere along the road. Um, the attenuation tank proposed realistically exceeds the requirements of an outbuilding or a development of this scale. So okay. we're, we're satisfied that they okay, that yeah, would be on. Okay, good. Yeah, Okay, uh, well, in that case, recommendation is to grant the third conditions set out in the report. Can I see those in favour, please? Okay, so that's um, granted. Thank you very much. Uh, we can now move on to. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Right, so, sorry, that was, so that was granted by uh, four votes to one. With Cancer and Vivian voting against. So, if we can now move on to um, consider um, the applications at uh, Bansfield School. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll just talk you through just two slides really to show you. Um, this existing um, Photographs on the, on the presentation before you show you the gates in question. Um, actually, the most useful is the top left photograph. You can see that there is um, a, a vehicle access gate um, and then a side gate. Um, you can just see in the far right of that there is a brick pillar. Essentially, the proposals before you this evening are to raise the height of that fencing to match the height of the brick pillar. I'll show you that in drawing. Um, this is sort of taken from inside the school, so you're kind of flipping the elevation, but hopefully you, you can understand what I'm saying. So here's that brick pillar and the height of the gate now increases. Um, originally, it was also proposed to increase the height of the pedestrian gate. Um, we sought an amendment to secure that the height of the pedestrian access remains as it currently is. Um, so it's just that larger gate, the uh, vehicular access that would increase under this proposal. It's before you this evening because it's a council owned application um, and you need to make a decision on both the planning commission and the list of building consent application. Okay. Any any questions about this? Yeah. Okay. In that case, we need to first vote on the planning application. Can I see those in favour of granting that? So that's one. And Secondly, the listed building uh, consent. Um, can I see those in favour of recommendations grant listed building consent? So that's agreed as well. Thank you. And then finally, uh, the last time, another school. Um, yes. uh, this time, I think we're talking about windows, aren't we? At yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so. Again, it's before members this evening because it's a council owned application and they're seeking to replace the windows with slimline double glazed units. Um, and they have been put through the mill by our design officers to make sure that we're getting, you know, high quality slimline replacements for all these beautiful windows at the school. 
we've got lots of details up front and just showing you the kind of level of detail we've received. That's an example of window nine and they've gone through each of the windows to do that. So we're confident that it has an acceptable visual impact and a recommending approval. Any uh, questions about that? Uh, just, just a note. Uh, yeah. uh, great information here, I have to say. I know the school very well, and uh, I think this is a considerable investment by the Royal Borough Kensington Chelsea in a, a, a good performing school. So uh, I think it should be the, the, the detail that you've given us is great. Yeah. Yeah.